Hi guys, Chi Money Gang, welcome back. So there is no making money without selling. There is no making money without selling. Selling is at the base of every business endeavor, right? So even when it's not business, like anything you need humans to act and um, the, uh, sign up to, like believe in, even if it's an ideology, you need to market it. And so many times, we look at these things as a bit anti-human behavior, like we are weary about marketing when it comes to our own stuff. Have you realized? Like we could go ahead recommending people for other people's products, talk about our religious affiliation, get people into the hall, but when it comes to our own stuff, we seem to shy away. I don't know if it's a cultural thing or a money trauma kind of upbringing, um, at least in the part of the world where I am, right? But I think that there's a few things we need to put in mind if you want to nail selling all the time. I had to learn selling very, like, I, I think I'm a late bloomer, you know, like if you understand, in my 30s. And I began to think that from my early years of thinking, oh, I'm an introvert, I don't want to sell, I don't like to market. Back in the days when we were younger, being a marketing official in a bank was like, first of all, scary. Then it had a little bit of, uh, what I call that, daint. Like, it, it puts a daint on you. Like, people are going to put pressure on you, make advances, untoward advances at you. Uh, you may need to succumb to be able to get them, to, you know, to sign up to your bank, open an account, you know, that kind of thing. So, people used to always dodge, dodge marketing. They'll say, oh, no, I don't want to be a marketer. But my God, it took me to begin to do my own business to realize that, wait, <laughs> who is going to market for you? If you're going to make money, remember, there's a reason why awards go to best sellers and not best products, right? Is there anything like a best product, for instance? It is a best selling. So you must market and learn to not just market, but close deals to make sales. And when sales come in quantum, you, you can say you're in business. There is no business without profit right so that is key so if you must do any business i did a post on facebook yesterday um and somebody was requested especially for this video and i said yes i'm going to make a video out of it why not right so i'm going to just go through the things i think you have to keep in mind as the face of your brand as a marketer as somebody who works in an organization for you to be able to attract funding to the organization so selling is a must do so number one thing I think especially if you're a, a personal brand growing a business online in particular because I mean this is my space right I belong to the creators economy so I can only talk from this perspective I can't talk about manufacturing all of that even though the principles are the same right so I'm gonna just um, read through but I'm gonna explain as I read what I had already written on Facebook just you know for us to think about it now tell me is your money game something that has been suffering because of selling let me know in the comment section please write selling in the comments so that i can know you're listening and then know that you followed up to this point and also go ahead to give this video a thumbs up so that other people can join us and we can do this even better if you haven't subscribed it's a great time to go ahead to subscribe okay so number one thing selling tip that i think you should put in mind is embrace self-promotion voraciously be happy to be the chief marketer of your brand i mean this goes without say no matter who you employ especially if it's your business remember i said if it's your personal brand or your business no matter who you employ they can't possibly bring the deals as much as you can because you birthed this, you have the ideology, you have the uh, unique selling point, you know why, you know who your product is solving a problem for. So you can sell this, wake you up from sleep any time of the day. So you are the person not to shy away from marketing. And do you know what I do also? I don't leave the marketing point of my small businesses to uh, employees. For instance, if there is a need to pick up calls, so there's a phone number being advertised, I must make sure that I'm at the end of picking those calls at the beginning until, you know, my business gets some momentum and I can, you know, step out of it, right? It is that important to me. So everything that has to do with marketing, facing the customers, you have to be the one to carry it with pride, right? Number two sale hack I think you should keep in mind is know your worth. By this, I mean your own self-worth and the worth of your product or your services. You know why this is important? If you don't, people who you're speaking to will know that you don't believe in this thing that you're selling. 
and you don't want to be there. Confidence spreads like well wildfire. It's something that people can't unsee after they see it. You know what I mean? So if you come to me to sell me this eye pencil and you really want me to buy it and you know why it's good for me and you don't go ahead to act like you're excited about the solution um, this eye pencil will bring, I might tell you, okay, I'll buy maybe some other time because that's the energy you're giving. You're, you're, you're giving me options to think about it. You're giving me options to want or not want or you're giving me the vibe that please buy from me so that I can eat. Do you understand? So that is appealing to pity. You must know your worth, the worth of your personality and the worth of your product to be able to sell all the time, to succeed in selling at least most of the time, right? Um, don't also let like what your competitors are charging affect your own charge and all of those things. Please, I say it all the time. One of the biggest business successes I've heard is to look at, is to benchmark by with knowledge from competitions, but to go ahead and be realistic with my pricing in a way that will serve my business. Because I know one thing, because I know my worth now, that there is always a customer for me. Yes, there's a customer for my other competitors, but there's also a customer for me who wants exactly what I serve, the way I serve it in the plate I serve it, in the mannerism and the sweetness with which I serve it. Right? So you must know your worth to that extent. It doesn't matter what another person is doing in that sense. I didn't say don't learn from other people. Remember what I said? You know your worth enough not to stifle your business because you're trying to put yourself in the trap when, you know, to be like other people because you don't know the parameters with which they are pricing, for instance, they are creating their products and all of that. Master the art of storytelling. God, this one had me going back and forth for years i mean even now i will have to uh prep myself to say oh no what story is going with this post before i write it so i had to put it in the back of my mind because somehow i realized that i have been very private i'm a very private person but storytelling doesn't mean you're putting your business out there stories come from different things i had to learn this and so i'm just telling you right so before you put out something that you're selling imagine a story in your in your present, past, or even in your imagination, that will convey this the human angle of the story. And I remember when I was practicing journalism, the few years I practiced journalism, why human human angle stories was such a big deal, right? Human angle stories was such a big deal, and it still is, right? It's now that it's turning on me, like seriously. So think of a story that will sell. First of all, it will attract people's attention to read the post. Up to the end it's when they read it that you're able to even get the gist of your offer and they, they make it um and they are they decide whether they are compelled enough to want to act you know what i mean so you must master it i'm not saying learn it i had to learn it but i had to master i am on the road to mastering storytelling and for every time i think about it now it becomes really fresh because it's like these are dumb things things have happened things you have gone through things that are really hilarious so why don't you leave it in the bill memory bank of your, or, you know, of your mind, you know, share it and it makes all the difference. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Make your offers irresistible. There's something I learned a long while ago that I've applied that has helped me. When you're preparing your offer, let's say you want to sell an ebook that will help people make their first $1,000 from their online course. And that's just an example, right? Um, you package this course, you've done it, you know, the outline, you're selling it. Why do you think you have people adding things, other things, bonuses, templates, workshops, maybe coaching angle, depending on what it is. They, so you can even do a, a, a match, right? So I know that people want to pay money and get a value that is much more than the money that they pay. So until you make them feel like they are cheating you, your offer is still a, mm, I'm thinking about it. So when you make your offer irresistible, it makes people feel like, oh my God, let me buy this thing now and not miss it. An offer that makes them feel like, ah, I can't miss this. It's impossible. I can't say no. You know what I mean? That is so key. I'm telling you things I've learned so that you also look at it in, with your practices and see where you can add and subtract as usual, right? Now, the next thing is nail your social media game. Social media keeps changing, keeps evolving. It can be tiring. Even yesterday, I was saying, oh my God, I think I'm going to delete my Facebook page because I don't understand what's happening, you know? And I got a lot of insight, right, from my friends and followers on Facebook. And, you know, I'm making the adjustments, right? 
Sometimes it can feel like, oh my God, I've been on Facebook since 2008, right? That's how long now. You know, think about it. And for every time, I feel like I just came, like I just arrived because thanks to Mazakabag, of course, and the changing algorithm and things. So a newcomer can arrive Facebook today and blow up, like literally blow up. You with your grandma, you know, I have been here since ideology can just be fading. I wonder why is there no engagement on my post? What's happening? What's happening? Well, trust me, guys, I've also had to think since last night till now that storytelling never fails. And I actually dropped a story, a short story today, and it's working. And I'm like, oh, okay. I think I derailed. I started going into long pause things. My side of the internet from the world, there are certain things that are appealed to us, right? Okay, so what I'm just saying, understand the psychology of the people on your social media. Turn your followers and friends into real customers by carrying them along. There's something called, when I used to teach in Google uh, Africa, I used to... There's something we call um, the customer journey, right? So you must be able to take people along and make them feel like they're part of the project that you are embarking on or the product you're creating or whatever it is that you're you know, bringing out as a service. That way they feel invested in it enough to pay. So social media can turn total strangers to a brand evangelist, right? So put that at a part of my, your mind. Social media can change a lot. Social media has been one singular platform where I have been able to achieve so many of the things that I've been able to achieve at all in my years of thought leadership and uh, the social media influencing and all of that and of course right now youtube <laughs> okay so yeah the next thing i want you to put in your mind to get your sales and marketing right all the time is make sure that you crush customer objections crush customer objections see i learned this very well by around 2019 you see how late it is when i was learning about how to create an online course and i was also learning how to create very compelling and attractive sales copies what how can you cross your customer objection so you have this product you know the kind of thoughts that might make somebody not want to buy so like is the original do they have another color um, can i get my money back assuming i don't like it when i get it you know, all of the objections on their mind, go ahead and answer them already in your product sales copy. You get what I mean? That's why we have things like frequently asked questions and all that, but people always make it very rigid. Go in depth, explain everything. So after paying for this course now, what happens next? Let people know what's, ha what's gonna happen next. So either you're going to add them to an email list or they're going to get an email or you know what i mean or they're going to get a, a packet to their physical address whatever it is let them know all of these things that is going to make them feel like i don't even know um, if they have a pink color answer it already your copy oh i don't know if when i'm going to deliver it if i pay now let it be known why do you think you're shopping on amazon and they will tell you exactly the delivery number of days the number of days it will get delivered and on the date that is possibly going to arrive and most of the time it comes a day or two earlier that takes you to the next point make sure you always on the promise and over deliver see guys i learned this one by instinct, by just, you know, being who I am. I like to be kind to people. I want people to treat me like I'm valuable. So I make sure that I treat people the same way. And I told myself, there's no need putting myself in between tight schedules in, in this sense now, looking at my, uh, my copy editing business at the time, I would always tell people, okay, they turn around time for your script or your manuscript, maybe two weeks. Then I would struggle so hard night and day it affected my health and all that, trying to make, you know, to meet it up. Of course, I was starting out. I didn't know what the industrial standards were, but I got to a point where I had to decide, oh, okay, instead of promising two weeks and then struggle, maybe when is a day to two weeks, you're still not sure. You know how you feel very personal when you're an editor, you know what I mean? You feel very personal to get the work out where you're not so sure. And then you're trying to tell your client, please give me a few days. Instead of having to make that explanation, why not ask for four weeks? So they can take your time and do a good job and give it to them like on the third week, two days time. You know what I mean? So your, your customer feels like, oh my God, amazing. I was expecting it on Friday. It came today on Monday. You know what I mean? To make them feel even much more, like they got even much more value. This is so key, guys. This is one thing that will make them feel, especially when they are not satisfied with work, they are like... Oh my God, anybody who needs your product, they're going to be the first person to tell them this is you. They're going to direct them back to you. And that was how I actually ran my business between 2009 till about 2016, 17, just majorly referrals because I was still working nine to five jobs when I started that business, my book editing business, which is Logos Audible. You can't believe it. And 
I didn't want to do an extra marketing because I already had jobs. I had my hands full and I was still working and I had my assistants and we were getting jobs back to back, right? So don't underestimate that. Always over deliver. Mm -hmm. Next thing to this thing is play the scarcity card. Anytime you, you, you launch something, don't let people feel like, oh, buy and buy. Anytime I wake up next month, when I get my salary in two months time, I can buy. Yeah, if you have a physical shop, fine. I mean, people can always come by anytime. But remember, I'm using the online business uh, model to do this. Don't let people feel like, okay, I can go buy and buy. I can do this. That's why people do things like early bread. If you come between this and this one and pay, you're going to get this. So, you know, use the scarcity card. You know, make people feel like, oh, there are only three entries, for instance. There are only four more tickets to go. I'm saving only 20 businesses for now. So the first 20 business, I get them and off I go. You know, that kind of thing. Play the scarcity card. It has a funny ring to it, it that ties to our, the funny human behavior that we have. We always want to take action when we know that we don't want to miss out. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that works. That works. I'm sure you already see a lot of brands and you've got a lot of products that have those kind of offers. So apply the same for your business. Do so. Next one you should keep in mind is make sure that you know and you, you get customer testimonials. Gosh. When I discovered that testimonials are gold, I was like, what? What have I been waiting for? And it's anybody you sell, free or paid, please make sure that they tell you their sincere, honest opinion about using your service or your products. And please make sure you frame those, design them, use them as part of your marketing. Please don't miss this. Customer testimonials, you can't buy it with money. It's invaluable. Like it is, it is so valuable, you can't put a price on it, right? That's something you need. For your marketing and your sales trust me especially when you want your selling is luxury or is high ticket it works even fire like it works like fire seriously don't underestimate the power of testimonials and most times don't wait around and think that your customers will come give you testimonials no sometimes you have to prompt them Hello, I hope you you like this. What do you think about this product? I hope you enjoyed your last purchase with us. Was there any way you want us to improve? You know, what did you like about it? Prompt them. So don't go, you might not have to go straight up to say, please can you give me a testimonial? I remember one lady, I edited her book a few months ago, sadly. And I said, oh, okay, would you like to give me a testimonial and all that? She goes, no, nah, I paid for the service. Yeah, I can't give me a testimonial. That's fine. Okay, it's okay. Some people don't understand the, the rationale behind it. Okay, and that's fine. Okay, so make sure that at least, even if you, you won't be able to get as many for as many people who you serve, but make sure that you can use the ones you want to get to keep sending out to um, you post on online and even do your ads that way people have more trust that you know yeah i think I, if people are saying this i think i should use that why do you think people go look at customer reviews when they want to download an app to know whether it's crap or it's you know you know what i mean so make sure you use that also in your business all right uh next one pay influencers have a budget you know, I used to be an influ influencer back in the days between 2011 and 2018. They were great times. I was strictly, majorly a blogger in those years, even though I had my 9 to 5 job most of those years as well. But I did a lot of jobs for several organizations, the UN, Nigerian government organizations, public organizations. And it was one fun part of my life. Also, I really, really enjoyed myself. And those were the days I also used to be the organizer of bloggers party. I'm going to bring back all that. <laughs> okay, but the thing is, um, influencers can turn your business around, like without even knowing it. But you have to make sure that you look at the influencer that you're using. Make sure it's an influencer who is in the niche of your business. For instance, if you go get a music producer or a music artist who's very known, he has 30 million subscribers in the platform and you feel, oh my God, if I pay this guy to advertise me, he's going to bring that. I'd really be disappointed. So, and his fee is going to be so high for your small business that you're like, okay. So if you tell him, oh, can you do a post for me on Instagram where he has 30 million subscribers, for instance, he might charge you an upward of 1 million or 2 million naira or 3 or even more than that for that one post. So that's number one. Number two, you'll be so shocked, but by the time he mentions that business, just a few followers, a few inquiries, but it might not go beyond that. You know why? Because you're not in the business of music. It's possible that you're selling an online course for people to learn how to use WhatsApp broadcasts, you know, like I have. 
So, when a music artist, no matter how big it is, people are going to look at it like, oh, okay, one of those posts and pass by. But imagine if it's somebody who is an internet marketer, somebody who is known, who is who is also in the online business space, who advertises it and says, oh, oh my God, this guy, maybe the person has an online course as well, or something complimentary, something, you know, not exactly, but, you know, complements what I do. And I say, okay, so I pay this person. It might not be 50K or 30K. And the person says, okay, I'm going to put it up for you. The person might, might just say, oh, okay, so check out this guy. He has um, an online course also on WhatsApp and he's helping a lot of people do this and that. A lot of people from me, because they already know him to be somebody who sells educational stuff. People have, they have trained a lot of people or she has trained a lot of people. The propensity of them coming to trust him more to say, okay, also I've been wanting to learn WhatsApp marketing. So if this person says it, then I must have to go with this person. It's higher than that record artist who has 30 million followers it's crazy but that's the truth that's the absolute truth guys and yeah so make sure that you're able to you know look at who can work best you know we can work with two or three influencers at once and then look at the result and also make sure that when you're paying an influencer you're there ready in their comment section to close the deals they are doing marketing they can't sell for you they can't close the deal so if people are saying oh i want and you're uh, you're not there in the comment section to say oh okay i've sent you the, this in the comment section okay click this link okay drop a message do this or, or have a database where you can get back to them later then you're going to lose the sales at the end of the day and the heat of the hour most times we buy emotionally as well. So that time that they're ready to buy, make sure you collect your money and sell your products. Okay. Also, why this is happening, make sure that you also understand and use the power of upselling. Upselling means, okay, you're selling this iPad so that is, um, is um, 100 Naira, you know, which is about maybe $1, not $1, 100 Naira is about 30 cents, right? Now, you're selling to somebody who is excited about it, then you imagine that the person might need a lip liner as well. The person might need an a, it might need lip gloss, and you have a lip liner, lip gloss, eyeshadow palette package. So we immediately they agree to buy this. Let them know that oh okay for three for for another thirty naira, you can actually get your lip liner, lip gloss, eyeshadow palette in addition to this. So you might end up getting paid forty naira. What am I saying? If this was 100 Naira, so you're telling them about your package, which is 300 Naira, you might end up making 400 Naira from this person, this one person, than if you were just interested in closing this deal and going. When you're closing this deal, remember that that person will need some other things and make sure they are things that are higher in price. So you've gotten them in with this. They trusted you enough to pay. Now introduce them to other of your products that are higher in price. That's upselling. Okay, that's what I mean. Make sure you do it in the heat of that moment when the person is making a buying decision. That's called strike when the iron is hot. Hot, hot, hot. You know what I mean? Okay, this is my pencil. I've been doing some illustrations today. Um, yeah. Next thing to keep in mind to get your marketing in all the time is create that fear of missing out. Let people see the lifestyle behind your products, your service, that made them feel, I want to belong here. I want to be among the people who want to belong here. And that's why I really love DSTV Prestige. I mean, we've been watching, I've been watching DSTV for 11 years. I bought different bouquets and all that. But you know, when I saw the DSTV Prestige being advertised, and even right now in Big Brother Niger, they have a higher, higher, higher number of you know, votes, SMS they can use. And all of the concierge having dedicated customer service, being invited to exclusive award ceremonies and all that, and having a whole one year subscription. You don't have to be every month to say, oh, I'm disconnected, or well, let me renew, all of that. I was like, this makes sense. You know, and I can actually hook you up if you want to, among those who want to join the one year membership called DSTV Prestige is an exclusive luxury entertainment package of, you know, multi-choice. Check in the description for how to get that in. If you're in Nigeria, if you're in Nigeria, in the South South of Nigeria in particular, let me know if you want to get into the next level, next level, okay? All right, lots, over 160 channels, and you have three extra views, so people in your family can enjoy other things that they want to watch, and much more. And did I tell you that the remote and the decoder is 24 karat gold, like crazy. That's one of the craziest packages that DSTV have done. Yes, so when people have that kind of product, they don't want to miss out. So they feel like, mm, 
I want to be in this clique. Make your products like that. So that's part of why I'm even upgrading some things I'm doing, you know, right now in my personal business as well. Okay. Harness the power of email marketing. Get people's contact to a place where you can never lose it. You can lose people's phone number, or social media handle, you know, don't even know the comments where they dropped stuff. Emails don't change much. Emails are hardly deleted. They say people consciously delete a message. It's always going to be there. So people can always reference and you can always reach them even when they have changed phone numbers, home address, social media handles and all that. Their email address will always be there. Another thing I also say, side by side with email address, get people into your WhatsApp program if you can. This can go bad in the sense of you can lose a phone and not be able to connect and back up and all that. But make sure you have people in your broadcast list according to what um services that they are more they are more suited to buy from you this is something that is very very important and i also have a course in the description where you can actually take on the power of creating and selling out products using whatsapp broadcast very important if you don't have a broadcast list and people categorize into different categories of your product or your services then you're missing out on a lot so please don't miss out anymore think email think broadcast listing for maintaining customers after they have bought from you and before they bought from you make sure that you have them in those categories so they can always sell again and again to them right don't miss out on this so that you don't keep starting from scratch to get customers all the time starting from scratch to get customers all the time somebody who buys from you today can refer you to somebody else to you tomorrow you know but it is when they know that you're always in contact with them you're sharing updates with them you have new products you let them know they will definitely want to buy from you again and also do business um, with you even beyond there yeah now the final one is personalize your deliveries your approach every customer is not the same so look at what customers want their demographics who they are their preferences and use that to package and um, deliver value to them it can be the same product different people are buying but look at who they are and personalize it i learned this from one of my coaches stephanie will be kudos to her um you know you have to listen to what people are saying that they even want when you're trying to create an online product like online course or whatever ebook look at what the language that they, they speak when they are voicing the need that they have when you're trying to create a solution in that line and it will help you speak exactly what is in their mind and when you speak exactly what's in their mind their barriers are going to be flutter they're going to just say ah i want to pay for this you know what I mean? Marketing is so key and it's something that is interesting for me. You know, I, you know, like I said, I've had to keep learning it over and over again, but it's really fun when you start applying it. And again, I tell people, no matter what you think that you're doing, keep varying them. Like I said, you can use all of these 15 approaches for one product and see how it sells, right? And it's fun. And how do you know you're succeeding with your sales or your marketing? It is when somebody have actually believed you and paid. That's the validation you have. If people have not paid you and you're still marketing and nobody has have subscribed to that thing, nobody has paid you, that means you need to go back to the drawing board again and repackage that product, change the way you're telling them what the, the solution will do for them. You know what I mean? So speak in your language and it works all the time. I hope this helps. And you know, I'm going to bring you further things because on this channel, all we do is make money, make money, make more money. Yeah? And of course, make sure that we are wealthy. Money is one our soul spirit and body right so until i come your way again go apply this and let me know what works for you tell me in the comment section value 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 if you got value and i'll come to your way again really soon thank you so much